As we learn new things about something, we start to believe we know a lot about it. But this isn't often the case with space. Our solar system is much, much bigger than you would expect, and you'd be surprised how little we know about it. But soon, with the launch of a next-generation telescope, that might change. Does this mean we would finally detect an elusive Planet 9? Will we find some other secrets our solar system has stored for us? And would it all change the way we perceive our place in the cosmos? Now, get ready to discover answers to this and more. Referred to as Planet 9, but sometimes referred to as Planet X before Pluto's reclassification, this is an elusive world orbiting far beyond Neptune. It's been a mystery for scientists for decades. Since the beginning of the 20th century, astronomers suspected the existence of a large body affecting Uranus and Neptune. But once Voyager 2 approached Neptune in 1989 and sent us back data, it became clear we had wrong calculations. It turned out there was nothing weird about the two gas giants. It looked as though the hunt for Planet X came up empty. But that wasn't the end. Just recently, one curious scientist decided to look through the 38-year-old data from the Infrared Astronomical Satellite, IRAS, the very first telescope that managed to scan about 96% of the night sky. And among about 250,000 point sources, there were three specifically interesting ones. But how do you look for something in our solar system? If you take a telescope and look in a specific direction of the night sky, you'll see a bunch of dots. Some of those are distant stars, and some are solar system objects. So how do you distinguish one from the other? You look at an object's motion. If it barely moves or doesn't move whatsoever, the chances are it's located quite far. But if an object travels a significant distance in space within a relatively short period of time, it means it's close enough in our solar system. Only one out of three objects from the IRAS data that met astronomers' requirements was captured moving through space. This is when the scientific community became thrilled. If the IRAS data is right, a planet we've been looking for should be three to five times as massive as Earth and orbit at a distance of approximately 225 astronomical units, one. But the other two scientists involved in the search didn't agree with that conclusion. However, they found yet another theory of Planet Nine's existence. And once again, the search got a new course. On the outskirts of our solar system lie six space bodies called extreme trans-Neptunian objects. And they aren't just some random objects, they all have one thing in common that makes scientists curious. All six of them have an orbit pointing in one direction. And because the chances of such distant space bodies with such an alignment are roughly 0.007%, we know there's something causing it. A gravitational influence of a much larger body somewhere out there. All the strange phenomena could be explained by a planet two to four times the radius of the Earth and almost as massive as Neptune. It would also have a highly eccentric orbit, getting close to our Sun at about 200 AU and then moving away at a mind-blowing 1,200 AU. Such an elongated orbit would have a 20,000-year orbital period. The only thing scientists lacked to make their theory look promising was several objects, with even stranger elongated orbits. But as it turns out, Another astronomer has just discovered such objects exactly where this theory would predict them to be. Still, knowing Planet Nine's orbit doesn't tell you where on its orbit it currently is. Nevertheless, there are things that scientists know for sure, and by means of pure logic and mathematics, they could make predictions on where to look for it. For example, at its nearest point to the Sun, Planet Nine has a brightness of 18th magnitude, so if it recently was that close to us on its orbit, it would've been easily spotted. And because of that, we think, it's closer to its furthest point, where it is as faint as 25th magnitude, which makes it harder to notice. How bright is that? The smaller the number, the brighter the object. To compare, Pluto's average magnitude is approximately 15. Thankfully, 
25th magnitude is still in the range of what the Hubble Space Telescope is able to detect. This is 10 billion times fainter than the human eyes can see. So while we don't know for sure where it is, we have decent proof to think it's there. You may think it's impossible to find such a distant object given the data we have, but we have already found a planet based on our predictions once, Neptune. Astronomers of the past believed something was tugging Uranus, but they couldn't find any reasonable explanation. Later, one scientist, using classical celestial mechanics, made a prediction on the location of a hypothetical planet that was supposed to be in charge of what was happening to Uranus. Using those calculations, astronomers were able to locate Neptune exactly where it was predicted to be in just one night. But while Neptune orbits our Sun at about 30 astronomical units, Planet 9 is expected to be much further away. Because of the great distances and how dim Planet 9 is, our chances aren't that high. But that could change very soon. A new generation of telescopes are on their way and one of them is currently being built in Chile, scheduled to begin operations. In the fall of 2023, this is going to be an 8.4-meter telescope with a 3,200-megapixel camera on board. The camera, the size of a car, is going to be the largest camera constructed for astronomical purposes. With such a tool, scientists could not only verify if Planet 9 actually exists, but also find roughly 20 terabytes worth of space objects and other phenomena in one night, just in a year the observatory will be able to capture more of the cosmos than all the telescopes on the Earth ever did combined. This can turn our perception of the universe and our place in it upside down. If you'd like to see a full video about this telescope and what it could find, make sure to let us know. What if we search the entire sky where Planet 9 could be and find nothing? One possibility is that Planet 9 could be mistaken for a primordial black hole, which would have similar gravitational effects. Primordial black holes are hypothetical and have not been detected yet. They could have emerged in the early universe and existed for just a second, with a range of masses from as small as 5 to 10 grams to as large as 100,000 solar masses. If Planet 9's calculated mass aligns with a primordial black hole a few times the mass of Earth, it would be incredibly small, like a grapefruit or even smaller than a human fist, making it impossible to find with a telescope. However, there is a more aggressive method that involves sending hundreds or thousands of laser-propelled spacecraft to test the gravitational field of a possible primordial black hole. Even if only a few spacecraft pass by the black hole at a distance of tens of astronomical units and send back data, it would be sufficient. By measuring the intervals between these signals, we can determine if a black hole truly exists based on the lengthening of the signals under its gravitational influence. The theories surrounding Planet 9 are diverse, and this is not the only possibility considered. Planet 9 may have originated as a rogue planet freely wandering through space until it was captured by our star's gravity. Studies suggest that in our galaxy there are more unattached planets than those orbiting stars. Simulations indicate that rogue planets typically enter and leave solar systems, but in some cases they can take other planets with them. However, there is also a chance that a rogue planet may be unable to escape a solar system once it enters. Discovering rogue planets is challenging requiring alignment between the planet, a background star, and observers. Gravity from a passing rogue planet can deform the light 